<laughs> so welcome to the Thursday Q and A uh, live Q and A here at Digital DJ Tips. You will see from the distinct lack of facial hair and any hair from me that uh, it's not Phil here today. But um, representing uh, representing Phil this week is me, Steve. I'm Phil's partner in Digital DJ Tips, and that guy, Ben, who uh, is bringing right. the bringing the beard game. On behalf of Phil, how are you doing, Ben? I, I, I try to. I, I'm not very good at growing a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are. I'm just switching off notifications. Everyone seems to want to get in touch just at the moment that uh, we just go live. Um, cool. So we're starting to see some comments coming in. We are hopefully, as long as technology is uh, on our side, we're live on uh, uh, Facebook on our main Facebook page, Digital DJ Tips. Uh, and also in our two groups, which is Global DJ Network and Student Hub. Hello to everybody there. Uh, and also on uh, our Mixcloud uh, live channel and also Twitch and, of course, on YouTube. So uh, we've got a few people already jumping in and saying hello. So I'm going to put a few of these up on the, uh, on the screen. Oh, that doesn't look very good, does it? What's going on there? Let me just... Uh, it looks like the comments might be... You've not got black text. Yeah, not behaving themselves. That is strange. So let me try and figure that out. And while I do that, Ben, why don't you just uh, do a little bit of hello and uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, so hello. So, uh, so most of you will uh, hopefully know me anyway. Um, so my name's Ben. Uh, I'm the community manager here at Digital DJ Tips. Um, and my sort of, I'd say, area, area that I'm um, able to help with uh, is uh djing in um bars and clubs uh i've done a little bit of mobile djing as well um so if you've got any questions in regards to anything regarding that uh, i also stream as well uh for digital dj tips um so yeah plenty of streaming um my gig started back two weeks ago so yeah just getting back into djing in front of a, a live in-person crowd and so yeah, so if you've got any questions in regard to anything like that, um, yeah, pop them over to me. Cool. How was your uh, how's your, how was your first gigs back in the in the real world been? Uh, nerve wracking actually. I've been I've been really nervous about them um, for something that was always kind of um, that didn't really affect me. Um, kind of like I had like visions of me just like having nothing playing at all. Um, you know, like, you know, the music stops and I've got nothing else prepared. I'm like, and I was like, oh, what did I used to play? I was like, what, what follows this? What follows that? And I just <laughs> got a complete um, mind blank. Lock. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. As, as uh, you know, as the two nights, I've, got, I've done the two different, two different venues. Um, first night was actually a, a new venue. I never DJ that as well. So that made it even worse. Um, but yeah, no, they went, they went okay. They went fine. Uh, well, that's, that's been negative. Went, went, went well. Um, <laughs> the last, you know, the Friday I had, um, you know, it was the busiest Friday they had uh, since reopening as well. So that was that was good as well. And kind of yeah, just forgot it all and just got you know just got into the flow. And then yeah, DJ again tomorrow in a in a, in a third venue. Cool. So, Not very good. So listen, we've got uh, normally we're able to put comments up on the screen, and they usually look. Uh, Lovely, but uh, something is not working right. As you can see, I've just put that comment on the screen. Let me just see if there's anything I can do with the formatting of this to um, to make it better. Um, because if not, we may need to um, restart because uh, the comments, in fact, the questions, you know, this is a live Q&A. This is your opportunity to answer questions and get us to help you. Uh, it's good to have the comments on screen. I guess we can just read them out, um, Ben, because I can see them here, but they're just not looking that great on the screen. So, so let's just go with it in a true Phil Morse style. Who's been, you know, if any of you have been watching some of our broadcasts over over the recent weeks, we'll have seen that Phil's been uh, doing live streams from all different weird and wonderful parts of of the world with sometimes very sketchy internet. And he would not be phased by this, would he? He would be, just be getting on with it. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what we got to yeah, do. It if it helps, I can see the comments as well on my screen. They've, they have popped up. Okay, good. All right, well, let's just do a few uh, shouts and hellos. And apparently we're not live in the two groups, so that's another little uh, technical technical glitch. But we're good to go everywhere else. And thanks to Lauren for, for letting me know on that. So hello to GM, uh, Mason, Housemaster J, good to see you here. Uh, DJ Roadrunner, 
Big Joe Joyce 93 says hi guys with his showing his his guns emoji. I'll do my own guns emoji. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, uh, David, uh, Sean, uh, DJ Skojo 69, uh, Lee, Yan, uh, and there's and, and this guy. I love I love your name. His name is You Don't Like My Music. This is from YouTube. I remember this. It's, it's his YouTube handle. You Don't Like My Music. It always catches me. Michael, DJ Fuzz, Mark, Dennis, uh, Doc Nasty, John, loads of you here. So do keep your questions coming in. Um, we can see a few of them there already, which I'm going to get to. Um, and uh, we will kind of share the spoils between myself and Ben. Phil usually does this slot and he has got an encyclopedic brain of everything related to uh, DJing and especially all the sort of technical stuff as well. But feel free to ask any questions. If we can't answer them today, we'll get you answered uh, in the comments uh, wherever you asked it, whether it's YouTube or Facebook. Um, but also just have a think about a question you might want to want to put to us. As Ben's already mentioned, he's a very um, experienced uh, bar and pub uh, DJ um, and uh, knows his stuff with this kind of tech for, for mobile gigs and stuff as well. And for me, uh, I'm the Scratch Tutor here at Digital DJ Tips. So if you've got any questions about scratching uh, or mixing, uh, because I do a lot of the tuition for the house mixing courses and the, and the mixing training. Uh, and also I've got a, quite a long career in the music industry, in the record industry, in compilation albums and stuff, and nightclubs. I worked at Ministry of Sound for a long time. So anything pops into your mind that you want to ask us, feel free to do that. Right. That's enough blathering on. We're gonna be here for about 45 minutes or as long as it takes to get through the questions. As I've said, the question uh, widget that goes on the screen isn't working, so I'm just gonna to have to read them out. Um, so DJ Roadrunner says, I'm thinking of using phase DVS on my turntables. Do you think they're good and what is the accuracy like? So um, for those of you who don't know what phase is, it's um, it's a pretty incredible um, piece of technology, which is, uh, let me see if I can actually get a picture of it up uh, on um, the screen, he says. Hold on. Okay, let's, uh, let's, see, if we, let's see if we've got the, uh, Got the technology here, one second. Okay, here we go. So there you go. So phase is um, basically these two little gizmos that um, little kind of, um, you know, little controller things that go on the top of the center pin of your decks. So if you use real turntables and you normally use uh, DVS timecode vinyl, uh, where you have to put the, the needle actually on the vinyl, the phase system the main kind of promise and the main exciting thing about the phase system, it does away with the need to use um, needles. You don't have to put the needle on the record. It fits over the center pin and spins around and there's a receiver that goes uh, through the mixer and connects up with the, with the software. And basically that sensor is sending out signal, it's picked up by the receiver. So all of the movements of the record uh, as it's going around um, are, are caught by the software and that's how it basically controls the music. So it's still doing that same thing that DVS does, which is sending a code, and as the record moves around, it's supplying that code to uh, changing the audio, moving the audio, but um, it does it without any connection with the needles and stuff. And in answer to your question, Roadrunner, I think now is a very, very good time to get phase. A lot of people um, jumped on it very early because it's so exciting, and it has, had its problems with its first few iterations, mainly, like you said, with the accuracy. Um, but um, uh, DJ Angelo, for example, has just done uh, one, his, mo his latest YouTube video using the phase system. So if you want to see how accurate it is, watch that. It's his jungle and drum and bass mix. Um, and yeah, it seems to be that they've, they've fixed all the issues and it's definitely uh, worth giving it a go. So. Um, so yeah, give it a try. I would say. Have you heard anything about Phase? Did you get? Have you had the opportunity to use it, Ben? I've not. No, I'd like to, um, but I'm, I've, I've fear using the jog wheels anyway. But uh, yeah, they have not had the opportunity to play with them yet. Cool. All right. Thanks for that, DJ Roadrunner. Let's have a look at uh, another question here. So your questions can be about whatever you want related to DJing. Just fire them in. Um, 
Here's one lighting question. Any thoughts on sound switch? Now I know very little about lighting. You're probably you're undoubtedly more experienced than I am. Ben, have you had the chance to look at look at or use sound switch? I've not used sound switch. No, um, I know what it is. You know, it's just you know the the it's the, the box. It was not a box. It's the, for the program that controls the DMX lighting. Um, I will be honest though. I have I've not used it. I just used the the sound to lighting on my old lights. Cool. Um, but however, I mean, sound switch will make it a little bit more in tune with your music and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, it would be better than sound to light that I use, but I'm happy with using sound to light. Right, cool. Yeah, it's it's popular, that's for certain. A lot of people use it, and maybe some people on the uh, on the call here have had some experience with sound switch. So, uh, that question was from DJ Skojo69. So, if you've got any experience to, to share on sound switch, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, Okay, great teacher Vic uh, has asked a question. Any, so I'm going to try and put this on the screen. Yeah, kind of works. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, um, if you could hold up a piece of white paper in front of you, yeah. That's what I was aiming for. Hey, look at this. This with to do list from Scott. Look at that. We've got the technology. Any tips for boring breakdowns in house music on extended mixes? Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm very. Um, aware of boring, long boring breakdowns in house music because I, I love house music and I play house music sets. In fact, I've got uh, my live stream coming up this Sunday uh, at this, uh, is it this same time? No, it's an hour later, isn't it? So it's, so, uh, Climate, it's um, five UK yeah, time. so five UK time this Sunday, I've got my live stream and it's uh, basically house music and tech house. And yeah, a lot of those kind of house tracks, they can be six or seven minutes long sometimes with really, really long um, quite drawn out breakdowns and they're cool in certain club environments. I mean, they are a lot of these, this music is actually produced specifically for certain types of clubs and certain types of dance floors where the audience there kind of know what the score is and they know that this is like a, a mellow breakdown and it's going to build and build and come back. But in some circumstances, people don't really get that the, that the beat has gone and that the beat has gone for ages and like, well, what am I supposed to dance to? So it's like, it depends on the audience, but I do agree that like sometimes they can be really long and really boring. Um, and what I do first of all is there's, there's two things that I do mainly if I if I think that a, a house track is dragging things out too long. The first thing is that if more more often than not it will have a break more than one breakdown in the in the track, and quite often it's got exactly the same one twice. Um, so. If that's the case, then what I'll do is actually put a cue marker at the end of the first breakdown, so when it drops back in, uh, and then basically put another cue marker, a hot cue, uh, at the end of the second breakdown. I just check that the end of those two breakdowns kind of sound the same, which they t typically tend to. And then what I'll do is I'll just jump by having my quantize um, switched on on my controller, and just as it approaches that cue point, count the beat when the beat's going to drop, hit that cue button and basically jump to the second one. And quite often you can cut out a couple of minutes of a track by doing that. You can also do that by making it as an edit. You can also do that by making it as a flip in Serato if you wanted to. But that's a way to sort of get rid of unnecessary breakdowns. And then in shortening a breakdown, um, you probably would not think of doing it, but you can actually be quite harsh with, with edits in breakdowns. And what I use is beat jump. So if you've got a breakdown that's like 16 bars or 32 bars long, you can actually uh, get beat jump enabled on your controller and skip forward by two bars or four bars. Make sure you keep it to either two or four. I'd probably recommend four. Just do it in the middle of the breakdown. Skip forward. Make sure that you're not skipping forward at a point where it's going to jump into a point after the breakdown is finished because then you'll throw it out completely. But within that breakdown, you could use beat jump to skip through. And you'll just test it out before you actually play a track out live and play around with it, because you can actually halve the length of breakdowns uh, quite easily by doing that. So a couple of tips there, there for you. Anything from you, Ben, on, on dealing with boring, boring house breakdowns? No, no, you, you do the same things I do. Uh, for my streams, I already I pre-edit them. So if you look at my... Uh, streams for hit, uh, for digital DJ tips. You'll on the track list you see a just Ben edit. That's because I've already gone into it and I've chopped out the the, the big long um, breakdowns and I've already pre-done it. So that's how I get around it and um, set 
few points as well um, for when I'm DJing out and about, but mainly I'll uh, re edit. Do the edit so beforehand, to, um, yeah. Studio. Yeah, yeah. If you're a bit, if you're, if you're like, you know, still sort of building the confidence to do those sort of performance tricks live, then do what Ben does, which is basically create that, that version yourself beforehand, which you can still do live. You can just set your DJ software recording, play the track. Do your cue point jump or your beat jump that we've just suggested, and then afterwards go back and get that recording, put it back into your DJ software, and call it the my edit or whatever, as Ben has already said. So, so uh, hope that helps you, uh, teacher Vic. Just uh, check in the bottom of the comments, which is always good as we're working down from the top. So, for those of you who've just joined, this is the Thursday live Q and A digital DJ tips. I'm Steve. That <laughs> I can never get it. That is Ben, uh, and um, Phil and his family are on holiday at the moment. He's unable to be broadcasting this week, so we're, we're here taking over, answering your questions. So it's good to see you all here. Okay, so um, Ben, how far away are you from Manchester? Uh, about a 20-minute train ride. Okay, so um, there's a question here from DJ 2AM, which I'll try and put on the screen. Maybe your magic piece of paper might be able to, to help us again here. This is, I love the lo-fi nature of this, it's brilliant. So, hey, what's the best way to get into a club at Manchester? As I'm going to my first one with my friends next Friday, what's the best way to make a connection with the nightclub as I want to DJ at it? So, I'm Go throwing it over it. to you because this is local. Uh, yeah, I don't, I've only DJed in Manchester once. Uh, I think it was a bar called uh, Joshua Brooks. Um, and the reason I got the gig was because uh, I knew someone who was putting on a night there. Um, I happened to, to work with him at somewhere I used to work, and uh, so I got a, I got a gig there. Um, but oh, yeah, the only way I can say is is what I do in Mac, where I live, say it's just down the road. Is um, I got you know I get to know know the venues. Um, you know, I used to the, the first gig I had, I was um, I was going down to the to the club every, every Thursday. Um, I'd end up giving CDs. This is before, you know, before laptops and stuff. So I'd give the, you know, I'd burn CDs off and hand them to the DJs, and then they would play play my not my not songs I made, but songs I'd compilations I'd made because, and so they used my CDs for the, for the night. Anyway, uh, I'm waffling, uh, but that's how I got to, to to how I got my first gig was because they knew me, um, and you know, I spoke to um, spoke to people there. Um, so that's what I can suggest it is to go there and uh, make contact with them. I suppose now these days you've got things like Facebook, um, so you can always contact them that way as well. Um, but yeah, that's how it's 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 who I knew is how I've got how I've got gigs. Yeah, and um, you know, back in I'm casting my mind back many many years ago when I was making connections in nightclubs in in London in the late '80s. You know, I was a I was a fan. You know, it, initially it wasn't. You know, I. The first clubs that I used to go to, which, you know, I was very, <laughs> very young, were like, you know, we were queuing around the block to get in and paying to get in. You know, I, I was going there purely as a, as a fan of the club and the DJs and the music. And um, so initially I didn't expect to be able to get on the guest list or, you know, to jump the queue or anything like that. Um, it was just like I just wanted to, wanted to be there and wanted to be part of it. And doing that regularly, week in, week out, you start to see the faces, especially on the door and the staff. Um, mm. The main thing is to just be super polite. <laughs> and if you've got a sort yeah. of friendly, if you've got a friendly, outgoing personality, um, you know that's going to help you a lot. You know when you're, you know, the door staff. The people that you pay when you go in, who are sitting usually sitting behind a little piece of glass, just taking your money from you. Um, the bouncers, the security, the people cleaning in the toilets, the people on the bar, the bar staff. Um, just you know, just just be friendly, be respectful to everybody, and be consistent and be regular and uh, make introductions. But like, don't be too salesy because uh, if you you know if you're just there to basically just sort of try and promote yourself and say, hey, I'm a DJ, can I get a gig? They're just like. They hear it a hundred times a night, and they do, it's just it's just you know it's just not going to work. And in big you know uh, big cities like Manchester, um, you know the um, you know they're, they're 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 big cities. These are not like small towns where everybody kind of knows each other. But nightclubs can get very clicky. They can get you know they can be very 
and they can have a bit of an attitude sometimes as well, which is like, which I don't really like, you know. Um, so, um, so yeah, you know, just uh, be be consistent, be regular, be friendly, and meet people on the premise of, you know, I love this music and these DJs, don't you as well, you know? And then and then that's how you can build those relationships, which will event eventually turn into the question, which is like, so what are you doing? You're like, well, I'm I'm a DJ as well, you know, I'm looking to promote club nights or whatever it is. That's how the that's how conversations best. Uh, dealt with rather than going straight in with like hey can I have a gig <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how, I, how I've done it and all my gigs now also come from people I've worked with um, I was talking to someone someone that uh, messaged me uh, yesterday actually I'm uh, asking if a, if a DJ Northern Soul night for them because he knew me from another bar that I DJed at um, and then say, say them stuff as well they move around and then they go, oh, okay, I remember Ben from here. I'll see if he's free. And and then you get yeah. to you get all the gigs and, and things like that. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's how I do it. All right. Um all right, so I've got another couple of questions here. Uh Jermaine has asked, Can can you change the location of your saved mixes in Serato Pro? I have to DJ a four hour set for a friend and they want me to record it. So I guess what you're asking is can I uh, select that I save my recording on an external hard drive rather than the internal laptop. Um, I think that would be possible, but you're going to have to do a bit of moving around of your Serato file structure um, because, and I, I, I'm kind of pulling from memory here, but I think Serato basically puts its recordings in a predetermined place, and I don't think you can change where those recordings go. And it's in the underscore serato folders which will be wherever you've got them more more uh, most likely on your laptop um, so it's only going to i think it's only going to change the location of where you put your recording if you actually wholesale move all your serato stuff onto the external hard drive so uh, if they want you to record a four hour set i would suggest you either make sure that you've got enough room on your hard drive to be able to record it um, or find some other method of recording potentially out of the, the mixer um, to be able to use an external recorder just to, uh, to make sure that you've got a safe recording as well and you've got the space for it. Um, anything to add on that, Ben? No, unfortunately, I'm not a, a Serato user, um, but cool. I would suggest using them. If I was going to approach it, I'd, yeah, an external audio source. Not an external, you know what I mean, a recorder. Yeah, cool. All right, what we're going to do after this is we're going to dive through a few of these comments uh, where you've left them either on YouTube or on Facebook and just give you some links to some articles and some other helpful stuff uh, that might point you in the right direction as well. Um, we're going to do that for you, Pete. Pete has asked for looking for the best subscription sites for tunes. What's your, what's your opinion? Uh, well, again, it all comes, it comes down to the type of music that you, that you want, really. Um, the biggest ones are BPM Supreme, uh, Beatport, and Beat Source. Um, there are others as well, um, and we've got an article that covers all of them and like which ones are going to be relevant to you depending on what type of music you want. So we'll uh, we'll let you know that in the in the links afterwards, Pete. Um, okay, I'm just going to check at the bottom of the comments just see uh, see if we because usually what happens is we get people helping out with the questions as we're as we're uh, doing them. So. Um, so Mixmaster G says, if you trigger files in Serato, then you can just drag a crate to the external USB. I don't think that's what uh, was being asked there. It was about where to save the recording. But thanks anyway, Mixmaster G. Uh, Tiffany is actually listening from Manchester. So uh, maybe Tiffany's got some tips about how to get into, get into clubs in, in Manchester. Right, let's uh, head back up uh, to the questions. Ben, have you seen it? I was seen say, it? Go on, yeah, I was going to say, it's the, uh, the hashtag ask as well, with the ah. question as well, so we, can, so we can spot it a little bit easier. Uh, a few of the regulars have, have done that, so they're, they're, they're jumping out on me. I can, I can see them. So cool. yeah, hashtag ask for your questions. I see it now. You can see Ben's more experienced than me in doing this. He's been covering a, a couple of these recently. So, Okay, so let's do that. Hashtag ask. Matthew, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen, <laughs> see if the... See if the magic piece of paper will, will work here again, Ben. Check it out. Move it. To, uh, there you go. Stop. Back the other way a bit. There you go. 
Might be a dumb question, but does it matter in terms of noticeable audio quality if you use your booth out versus your main out to connect to an audio interface for live streaming? Uh, very quick answer, no. It's the same output that's going out of there. So uh, you will be fine with that, Matthew. That's a, that's a, a good question. Um, Joe uh, says, I've got a few tractor questions. Is there any way to have a vinyl break on tractor? I know you can add this as an FX bank, but is there a way to apply a start stop? So for those of you wondering what, we, what he's talking about here, on uh, Serato, Recordbox, and pretty much every other piece of DJ software that there is out there, except for Traktor, um, it has the start, stop, or brake feature. And it's not brake as in brake, it's brake as in to put on the brakes on a car. And um, it comes from uh, the days of turntables where when you would press stop on a turntable, because it was spinning and it was a heavy platter, it would take a short amount of time to come to a stop. So that when, if the music was playing, you'd hit the stop button and it would, it would go before it came to a stop. And it's actually a really nice, satisfying sound and it's actually used quite a lot um, in uh, performances where you can kind of start and stop tracks and it's, uh, it's a nice effect. Um, and Serato has it, like I said, all the other software has it and you can kind of change how long it takes for the deck to stop when you've hit that stop button and the different sound that you get. But Traktor doesn't have it and it, in answer to your question, John, it doesn't have it in any way at all that you want to. The only way that you're gonna be able to replicate a vinyl break effect, which you, as you've already said, is to go into Traktor's effects. It's called turntable effects. Uh, and you can, and it does have a break feature in that, but it's, it's different to just pressing stop on the deck and getting that break sound. It, you've basically got to enable the effect, trigger the effect, over a track that's playing and it creates that sound of it stopping even though it carries on playing. So it's like, it's a bit crap really, if, I, if I'm honest. And um, you know, I actually made the uh, Tractor Made Easy course. It's one of our, one of our courses that we, we have available here at Digital DJ Tips. And it's a question that comes up loads with the students in there, is this, is this feature there? And unfortunately it isn't, John, but uh, thanks for the question. Ben, anything else sticking out? Uh, not for a tractor, no. Uh, I, if, you, if you're using DVS, just switch it, switch the record off. Yep. Any other questions that you've uh, spotted? Uh, let's have a quick look. Um, oh, there's one on. I think there's one on Mixcloud. Hang on. Uh, right. I'll let uh, you look at that. Two seconds. All right. I'm just finding it. And uh, Juan Alvarez de Neira de Gregorio, which is an amazing name. Hola Juan, I'm assuming that so uh, you speak Spanish, um, has said, I bought an S4 Mark III, so this is a Native Instruments Tractor Control S4 Mark III, to practice turntablism because of its price and portability. Uh, did I make a good choice? Yeah, it's a fantastic controller, the, the S4. Um, when you say turntablism, I wonder whether you mean turntablism in the truest form of like advanced scratching and beat juggling and those kinds of things. Because if that is what you want to do, then it's not really a very good controller for that. It's a great controller for pretty much any type of performance DJing that you want to do. But things like uh, scratching and beat juggling, especially beat juggling, is very, very hard to do on controllers anyway, any controllers. It's not impossible, it is possible. In fact, in the Scratch course um, that we have, Scratching for Controller DJs, uh, one of our tutors, DJ Angelo, has a whole advanced module and he teaches the basics of how to do beat juggling on controllers. But it's very hard um, and it's limited in terms of what you can do. So if that's what you meant by turntablism, then you may find that you might want to upgrade at some point in the future, but for most of what you're going to want to do with DJing, the S4 is fantastic. So, good choice. Ben, any questions? Yes. So, it's from Brian Woodley. Uh, it's a little bit similar to what I've actually already kind of answered a little bit. But uh, would you agree that the best way to get hooks is word of mouth or by going to venues to promote? Uh, because he's worked via a local agent uh, type situation uh, where someone provides him the gigs, uh, but he's looking to move away on his own. Uh, so it's yeah, kind of repeating a little bit what we've what we're saying really about kind of like the Manchester one, um, and um, yeah, I mean I, I get gigs 
by by both uh, I've approached venues um, that's how I've got my my current uh, gigs they open up a new a new venue um, so I, I message them and I was saying hey I've, I've heard you opening up a new a new bar uh, I've DJ'd here here and here um, and they asked for my mixed cloud details so I sent them over and got the gig um, but also as well I do get gigs from from word of mouth uh, especially when um, I've had a few this week already alone um, that I've had to, unfortunately I've had to turn down because I'm actually getting a bit busy um, whereas people have been looking for a DJ and they've gone oh yes Ben's a DJ or, or my friend's brother's a DJ uh, this is what happened with this Congleton one it was uh, so they they then messaged me on Facebook so yeah it's been a bit of word of mouth and also yeah approaching venues Cool. All right. I've been looking, uh, scrolling through, looking for some other other questions as well. Seeing a few good questions coming in. So hashtag ask as Ben has remembered is what you should put uh, to help us to see uh, if you're asking a question. Was that on Mixcloud, by the way? That one, Ben. That was on Mixcloud. Yeah, Lauren said those. Uh, just cool. Yeah. Over. Cool. Thanks for your your questions on Mixcloud. So um, got a question from Big Joe Joyce ninety three. Uh, it's a scratch related question uh, and he says when learning to scratch on the DDJ, DDJ 1000 do you recommend setting the jog wheel adjust to high or low? Low feels too loose to me but would you recommend otherwise? So uh, it's pretty easy this one. I have it absolutely bang in the middle at 12 o'clock so it's right in the middle between the low and high. Low is, is, is too loose and then high is way too, way too stiff and so bang in the middle just seems to work for me and it has the closest kind of feel really to me as vinyl. Uh, you use the DDJ 1000 as well, Ben, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just just there, just set up. Cool. Uh, yeah, mine's the same. It's I, I can't scratch uh, as, as well as you, but mine's, mine's the same. It's but it's that same, center. it's the sort of feel, it's the feel of when you're, you know, moving the jog backwards and forwards and manipulating music. It just, it feel, it, it, it's not, necess sort of. not necessarily even just scratching, it's just the feel of moving tracks around and stuff. It just feels better to me yeah. in that middle position. Yeah. I, I do a little baby scratches. That, that's that's about it when I'm when I'm if I'm going to drop it. So and then, yeah, it's all personal preference. But my my preference is the same as yours. It's straight down the middle. It's just twelve o'clock. Cool. Uh, okay. So DJ Kluby says, uh, can you recommend a good budget wireless mic for mobile work? So I'd probably throw this one to, to you, Ben. Have you got any any thoughts on this, or should we? Uh... Give DJ Maybe I'll find a link for that after, after here because I, I use a, a wired one. Um, I don't tend to do many weddings myself. Um, but personal preference, if I was if I was on the hunt for one, I would usually go for brands that I that I know, which would be Shaw. Um, yeah, that was, that'll be my first first look at. Cool. But like I said, I've never used uh, mine are wired. Uh, all right. So Mixmaster G says. Uh, He's joining from his boat on the Kagerplassen in Netherlands. Hope the connection stays up. Yeah, I hope so too. Welcome from your boat there. Um, cool. And The Ruckus, who is one of our regulars here, says, this is a first. We're both in the house and in the shed at the same time. So this is referring to our yeah. live stream DJ set. So um, as I've already mentioned, I've got mine coming uh, this Sunday. And mine is called In My House. And I convert this sort of nondescript room that many of you would have seen me in before. Uh, into a studio with green screen and everything and um, and uh, do my set from here and Ben where he's sitting right now is is where he works but also it's his shed and you do the same thing don't you you create your kind of DJ booth there and yeah yeah my uh, little desk over there I've got some uh, some uh, what they call it yeah them, them with them wheels it just go on to the bottom casters casters, uh, yeah. Some casters are, yeah so I move mine forward I've got a little camera there and I just plug everything in and yeah, so usually when you see me on my stream, you're looking from that camera there, and it goes that way to. Uh, so I'm only in like a. What, an, yeah, I'm in a tiny a little room as well. Box. Yeah, I'm in a little room as well. I'm actually going to just do a little bit of a side swipe on the camera there, and you can actually see my decks set up there with the rain twelves, and also some of my workout junk on the floor. But uh, <laughs> just to yeah. just to let you know, the decks are never far away, even though you're only ever there. You go. Yeah. Same, so same with Ben. That's mine, and there's the door. It's say it's it's tiny, but it's it's my little my little space. Cool. All right. So um, Mixmaster G is replying to Juan saying the S4 is a f fine controller, especially given its its price. I agree. Um, DJ Roadrunner 
says, uh, I want to make my own music like James Hype. How do I do it? Well, um, for those of you, uh, if you don't know, we actually made a, a DJ course with James Hype called James Hype's Mixing Skills. Um, it's um, been an absolute runaway hit of our courses. If you've not seen that and you're interested in, in mixing like James Hype does, then make sure you, you check that out on our courses page at digitaldjtips.com. Um, but uh, James is a producer as well. He produces very kind of like well-polished uh, pop songs. Uh, but he also makes like uh, James Hype sort of VIP remixes, really kind of quite banging, kind of like almost borderline techno mixes sometimes and tech house stuff. And uh, he's fantastic at it. And he actually does, I'm not sure if he's still doing it, but check out his Twitch channel because he was going live on Twitch um, doing production, doing production and remixes, uh, tutorials on there. Now you have to kind of catch them live because you can't, these that they're not getting saved and, and kept on his Twitch channel. Um, but, a bit of an exclusive, we are working on another course with James Hype. And uh, if you're interested in producing and making music like James Hype, it's probably gonna be of interest to you, that course. So uh, that is, a, that is a, a world exclusive tease there for you people who are live on this call. So thanks for that, that question. Um, but yeah, it's coming. But check out his Twitch channel because he is doing some tutorials around it, which are completely free. So uh, go, and, go and see if you uh, can learn something from that. Um, uh, Craig says sound switch is great. So it's good to hear. Uh, yep, Disco Joe 69 says for the long boring breakdowns, he's gonna use the beat jump feature to get through it. That's great. Um, okay, there's a question here from Philip. I'll put this on the screen. See how fast Ben is with his uh, piece of paper. <laughs> you keep on, you keep folding it up. <laughs> I know. He goes, okay, Philip, thank you for your question. Says, I seem to often acquire an issue where the trim level meter says two songs are the same velocity or level, but when I play them, they aren't. Uh, is that possible? Um, okay, so just to explain, thanks Ben, just to explain what's happening here is that what Philip is doing is kind of looking at the pre-fade level of the track um, on uh, your controller or your mixer. Even if you've got the channel fader down, you'll see some level bouncing up on your level meters if you've got individual level meters on your channels. And it's a good way of just checking whether the um, loudness, the volume of each of those tracks is kind of similar before you bring your fader up and you can use your gain and trim controls at the top to get them balanced if they're, if they're not. Now, if when you've brought a track into the mix, um, you've got, say you've got them level, you've, che you've been checking it in the headphones, they look around the same kind of volume, but when you bring it into the mix, they don't sound the same, then what I'd suggest is that it's probably something more to do with the type of music or maybe even the age of music because something can have a kind of volume or, or uh, you know in terms of going through the channel but when you hear it it just doesn't sound as kind of crisp and as punchy and as loud as the track you just played out of that's probably the most likely thing it's the same volume but it just has a very different um it's been mastered and produced differently it's not as crisp not as punchy not as loud that's probably the reason why and if that is the case then you need to account for that in your eq so for me, I play, I occasionally play sort of like early 90s house tracks, which sometimes can be vinyl, you know, ripped from vinyl initially. Um, and they will always need um, more mid and more uh, high EQ added to them to give them some sort of crispness and quite often a bit of bass as well. But if you end up putting them all up at the same level, they're basically, you're basically just turning the volume up. So... But yeah, mid and high EQs usually help those sort of duller sounding tracks to just cut through a bit more. So you're needing to, you have to listen to the sort of sonics of the two tracks that you're looking to mix together to make sure that they sound right. And if you think that your track that you're bringing in just sounds quieter, then trust your ears, ignore the level meters and just do what you need to do on the gain and the trim and the EQs so that you're happy that it sounds the same. Um, Anything to add on that one, Ben? I know I'm taking over today, aren't I? <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. Um, 
Yeah, no, that's pretty much the same. I was going to say, just trust your ears. Um, you know, when you're pre queuing in your headphones, um, try and you know work out how loud it's going to be, and yeah, just use your, your EQs. Um, also, as well, I mean, there are programs out there like uh, Platinum Notes, which I think you can run your. You know, I, I have used Platinum a, a few times. Um, I'm not too sure how, how much it would clear things up, but you can put your program, your, your tracks into that, and it will. Uh, alter a few things if it's uh, if it, you know if it's too low or too loud and things like that. Um, also, I mean, would the quality of your MP3 um, that that possibly could affect it? I mean, I think there's programs out there as well. Like, is it faking the funk as well? Um, you know, because if you're using like a, a badly sourced MP3 that could have been a, a, a YouTube rip, it's not going to sound the best. Um, so you know, get the the best MP3s that you can as well. Um, you know, or the WAVs, if you you know want to even go lost this, but that's that's a dif- different. Yeah, uh, there's not a different. That's not a different, that's not a different that, question. Different story. Today. Yeah, no, a few people saying. Kind of um, yeah, so the ruckus has said it could be because the bass on the lower volume on the lower volume track is too high, so it's unbalanced. It's, it's a, a good point. Um, uh, the guy or girl who calls themselves "You don't like my music." <laughs> it's like the artist formerly known as Prince. I can't just say <laughs> "You don't like my music." Um, uh, says always set your pre gain manually. Don't trust the software. So again, you, it's the trusting your ears point as well. Lots of people having experience with this. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. I'm going to scroll back up. See where we're at with the questions. We're actually almost already 45 minutes into this. So we've got a maximum of another 15 minutes to go. So we're going to prioritise the um, the questions that say hashtag ask. Uh, so I am looking through for those now. Uh, okay, Craig has asked a question. Does anyone know where I can catch up with the Master Mix DJ Beat CDs without it costing an extortionate amount of money? Even on eBay, they cost a lot to collect. So I've got no idea on that, but if anybody uh, does know anything about that, uh, Craig has asked that question earlier on. It'd be great if you could help him. Um, I'm not sure where that question was asked because the comments thing is, not, is acting up for me today. So sorry about that, Craig. Um, uh, Tim says, question, DJing from a golf cart. <laughs> um, need a Bluetooth speaker that will fit into the back of the cart or hang from the cart frame. Okay, so a couple of other people have already kind of helped out here. Um, what's the first problem with a Bluetooth speaker for DJing with, Ben? That would be a bit of lag. Um, I would put a wire. I'd use a cable yeah. Um, because, yeah, you hit that key button. Uh, you play button it's going to be there's going to be a delay there uh so yeah forget forget the bluetooth just cable it up if you can yeah i mean the jbl range of um of portable speakers are pretty amazing for, in terms of the sound quality um and they work great as bluetooth speakers but if you want to dj with them then you need to use the cabled connection so you've got you, know, you take an output from your controller and cable that into the speaker it seems to see, be sort of counterproductive doesn't it because why get a bluetooth speaker if i've got connected by cable but it's to get rid of that lag of that delay that ben ben says about if you want your uh you know if you if you do tight beat mixing and you want it to be tight then you need to have a cable and not use the uh, the, the slightly delayed bluetooth signal um all right so let's uh <laughs> someone's got hashtag ask and it just says ha ha I'm not sure that's a question but a uh, good way to get yourself noticed DJ Matt Dodge um, mm. uh, okay so you don't like my music has said what's the industry standard format for mixtapes to hand out to promote yourself um, well we have a course called pro mixtape formula which teaches you everything you need to know to make consistent quality mixtapes, basically like the professional kind of editing and production of them, and teaches you a whole system for being able to make them regularly and fast and and get over all those kind of issues with making mistakes and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of the format of what you would give a mixtape out in, it depends on the market really or who you're trying to impress. Because I'm sure some of you will know that like cassettes, cassettes have come back into kind of favor as a bit as a format over the last few years. And it really started with certain like acts and musicians and performers, like um, pressing some, uh, making some cassettes and using those as a promotional tool because they were so unusual. 
because they were so remarkable, like because nobody had them. So they were actually sending out the cassette and also a player to be able to play it on. And it's a good way to get yourself noticed doing that, right? But, um, but of course, you know, commonly now people don't have cassette players. Fewer and fewer people have even got CD players. What they do have is uh, Spotify, they do have Apple Music, and they do have the internet. So typically, the main kind of channels for being able to get a mixtape out there are a podcast. If you can set yourself up as a podcast that you can get on Spotify and Apple Music, it's a great way to say, check out my podcast, this has got my latest mix on it. Uh, or of course, using SoundCloud or Mixcloud. Mixcloud is the, the best one because it's legal and your mix is not going to get taken down. You know, we love Mixcloud a lot. Um, it's, uh, it's the channel that myself and Phil, and have you got your Mixcloud channel, Ben? Yeah, yep, I have. We've, we've got music. Yeah, we've got our own channels on there where we put our mixes up from our live streams and stuff. Uh, and that's really the place because then all you've got to give somebody is just a link. It's like click here to check out my mixtape. Okay. And then when they go to that page, you've got the opportunity to kind of put some branding on there and, and um, say a bit about you and say a bit about the music and put some other links to your socials and that kind of stuff. So really that tends to be the way to distribute mixtapes as an industry standard way these days. Um, ben, feel free to jump in if you uh, if you want yeah, to. Yeah, there was a question earlier on uh, if we had any experience with um, weird and different venues. Um, so I've yeah, I've, I've I DJed a, a few different kind of like venues uh, in my time and things like that. Um, but yeah, if it's a venue you're going to be a bit unfamiliar with or something a bit different, you know, like a marketplace or a I don't know an aquarium or a shop or anything like that, you know, something that's not the usual kind of bar venue situation. Uh, just go and check it out first. If you've been asked a DJ there, go and I, I probably would say go and check it out first. Find out where you, you can where you can set up your your DJ gear. Uh, if there's anything that's going to interfere with the sound, you know, because you know if you're in an aquarium, for example, and I'm not, I'm just using that as an off, off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think the sharks and the fish would quite appreciate some booming music against their glass. Uh, glass windows um but obviously you know the sound would bounce everywhere and, and things like that so i would if you've got if you're an acid dj somewhere a little bit different definitely go and check it out first um you know do a bit of a reconnaissance and figure out what you can do and speak to the management there as well because of they'll be aware of the gig as well and uh it'll just you know it's better than just turning up and kind of going right okay what do i do now yeah be prepared yeah you've got to minimize any un un nasty surprises basically right yeah uh, so we've got a couple of questions here about co courses. So these are from course, course students um, who are taking the opportunity to fire some questions at us here. So I'll just quickly deal with a couple of these. Stevie says, uh, I've got four months left on my house mixing mastery course. I was just wondering, can I log into the course that I paid for any time? Or once you guys send an email, is that it? So sorry if we've confused you at any point, Stevie, but basically if you've bought the house mixing mastery course, it's yours for life. Um, as with all of our courses, there's no time limit on when you take it. Um, it's yours for life. Uh, our courses do have a 12 month period where you can decide whether it's for you or not, the full money back guarantee in the first 12 months. So maybe that's what you're referring to. Um, but um, in terms of like when you actually take the training and how many times you take it and whether you want to come back to it or anything like that, it's, uh, it's as many times as you want indefinitely. And Craig, um, just dropped a note earlier on asking about when course uh, some responses are going to uh, come up in the courses. So I do I clear those every day, Craig. So I want to find out if something's uh, getting getting uh, getting slipping through the cracks there. So I'll drop you an email personally, and we'll 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 get you sorted out. Okay. Um, looking now for hashtag ask because we've got the last ten minutes here. Have you have you got anything? Ready, Ben? Um, yeah, there's a few things here. Uh, we've got one from uh, Lou Santiago. Uh, do you think Recordbox will ever sell its music edit separately from its subscription like Serato? Um, don't know. I don't know what uh, their, their plans are um, in regards to that one. Um, and then we've also got uh, Ollie One. Uh, where's the best place to get some good sample effects for transitions, please? Um, so yeah, do you have any transition places you like to 
or any places yeah, so like taking transitions from you need to look so sample effects is like things like uh, sirens and and fog horns and those types of things which um you can kind of find those pretty much pretty much anywhere but like the best place to kind of look for uh for tools to help you with transitions is in dj tools which is not a site it's basically a category which pretty much exists on all places so if you go to beatport for example or track source you will find dj tools as a category there and that's where you find things like uh samples and drops and um acapellas and uh kind of like um special edits of 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 tracks and that kind of things and 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 drum sounds and all that kind of stuff so look for dj tools um, and uh, DJ effects and uh, uh, DJ transition samples. Do some searching around that kind of stuff, and you will, you will find them uh, randomly as well. Uh, iTunes. Um, I got a load of like uh, Halloween effects one year. Oh from yeah, there. you know, like thunder, thunderstorms and witches cool. cackling, and you know. So if you, you know, if you if you could, in, you know, I so just sometimes drop one of them, and so just I could change the, you know, play that, and then so I could just change the genre or go into a Halloween song. Um, so yeah, the you know, it's just random places like that. Yeah, iTunes and yeah, yeah. So um, uh, don't like my music has just questioned about the you know the distribution of mixtapes, saying do you use business cards with your Mixcloud address then? So I guess you're kind of showing it's. Who does business cards anymore? <laughs> you know, most people are sharing contacts by t tapping their phones to each other these days, and uh, and you know, getting someone's email address or getting someone's uh, WhatsApp or getting their Instagram or something like that. So those are the ways that people are communicating with each other and sending links and that kind of thing. But yeah, if you do have business cards, absolutely put your Mixcloud on there, uh, your Facebook page, your SoundCloud, your YouTube page, your, whatever it is that you've got. Make sure that you've got links to all those on there. Um, but really a good thing to do is just have a link to your website and then your website can have a link to all of those different places. If you want to see a good example of a DJ who's got his website well dialed in in terms of um, uh, linking to all of the different places where he's got stuff going on is James Hype. If you have a look at jameshype.com, his website's super simple. It's really just a list of like, here's my YouTube, here's my SoundCloud, uh, here's my Spotify, uh, here's my Twitch, you know, uh, here's my Instagram. So like, you know, you can. That, that he's he's only got to send people to one place, which is jameshype.com, and then that's where all of that stuff is listed out. And of course, you can edit it and change it. Which, if you want to make any changes to any of this kind of stuff, you're going to have to reprint business cards if you did that. So, uh, so you might want to think along those lines. So, I think what Lou is asking, by the way, with Recordbox selling its edit thing, it's, it's the feature that it has in in it, the um, the ability to edit tracks. So Serato has Serato Studio, which is a separate piece of software which does that. And he's asking, will Recordbox ever split that out? I don't think so because it's a pretty basic feature. It seems that Serato have set out from the outset to try and make a, a new music production tool uh, for people, um, whereas Recordbox are just trying to find a new feature to go into the software. So I would say probably not, Lou, on, on that. Um, right, we've got about five minutes left, so let's... Uh, have a little scroll through. Sorry, we've not been able to put the comments on screen today. There seems always seems to be a technical gremlin hitting us the last few weeks. It's usually Phil because he's uh, live streaming from the back end of nowhere. By the way, Phil will be back next week from wherever he is in the world, probably in some rural part of Spain. Um, he will be here for next week's uh, Q and A. Um, uh, well, we'll look at that. Uh, Craig was just asking where's the best place to get uh, USB sticks from. Uh, but I'll be on later on as well, so I'll put some links on, as we were saying earlier cool. on. Um, I'll go back through and find some links for him. So I'll, I'll post some links for you, Craig. Cool. Uh, DJ Matt Dodge says, can I use Serato Flip to essentially change the BPM of a song? Say I want the song at 85 to be 95. I've been re-recording the songs, but I have to do the whole song. You know what? Well, I have no idea. I've not, I've not tried that in Flip. Um, I'm not, I, I honestly don't know. I think it, for me, I would probably do it the way that you're doing it. So, um, but if anyone has had any experience of doing that in, in Flip, then uh, then let us know. <laughs> okay. Let's Look at this. All right. Can I try them headphones on? Uh, later on, Spud. I'm just just on the floor. <laughs> oh, Robbie. Robbie, go away. 
<laughs> so, welcome to parenthood. <laughs> yeah, so I've got a crying child now. No problem, man. This is uh, this is what working from home is like. I'm sure a lot of people have had a lot of experience with this. I was actually on a on a on a um, on hold to talk to a call center, and they said, before we put you through to an agent, you should be aware that all of our agents are working from home at the moment. So you might hear unusual noise in the background, such as dogs <laughs> or children. <laughs> <laughs> They've obviously had enough experience of it to basically make that point. Okay. Um, having a look through here, we are going to need to wrap up. Craig uh, and the Ruckus, thank you guys for being here and for helping out all the other people in the comments. As usual, we can see loads of kind of interaction. Uh, DJ Root Roadrunner says, do you think the Pioneer DJM S7 mixer is dope? Yes, I do. I'm, do I'm not sure I'm young enough to use the word dope, but uh, I, I do think it's awesome. Um, and just quickly seeing if we've got anything. Uh, Stevie, Stevie has just, just uh, got the message that he's course is available to him for life and he's super excited and happy about that so that's great cool. uh tiffany right. okay this is going to be our last one tiffany i've put put her on the screen tiffany says are there any decent people or companies where you can get your own jingles made so there are quite a few um if you search on fiverr.com which is f-i-v-e-r-r.com this is like a kind of um, a freelance marketplace for people who are able to do that kind of work. So it's things like graphic design and, you know, website optimization and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's a lot of people on there who make jingles and they're reasonably cheap and quite quick to turn around. Um, but they're not like super professional quality and potentially are a little bit cheesy uh, and a bit like the same ones that everybody else has got. Um, so if you want to invest a little bit of money in it, there's a company called Music, uh, Music Industry Creative, I think it is. I'm just going to make sure that I've got that right. Yeah, just while you're finding that, I, I've used Fiverr myself. Um, all I got was the, the basic voice, and then I've chopped it up myself and done the little edits myself and made it loop and for the things I, I wanted to do. Uh, so I, I just got the, the basic, yeah. basic voice and for, for my own my own production. But. They're actually called musicradiocreative.com. They're based in the UK, but they've got voiceover artists based. Um, in fact, let me uh, just quickly put this on. Hoping it doesn't completely spoil everything here. Uh, there you go. Can you see that? That's musicradiocreative.com. As I said, based in the UK, uh, they um, and they have voiceover artists all over the world of all different um, uh, all, all different kind of styles. And um, so I'm hearing myself coming back through the speaker here now. <laughs> oh. You yeah, okay? Sorry about this. This is uh, I, I cannot concentrate when I'm all I'm do, all I'm hearing is myself coming back through the speakers. So uh, right, we'll get okay. rid of that. Right, I'll, music I'll have some. music radio creative, and uh, you can choose. So the voice you can say male, female, uh, European, American, British, whatever, and you give them the script. You give them an idea of the kind of energy that you want and the type of um, uh, uh, of jingles that you want, and uh, they send back a load of ideas, and you can feed back, and you can get changes and that kind of stuff. So. It's really good and you can make sure that they're a bit more personal to you. And what I'd suggest with jingles is don't just accept the first things that they send through because usually it's quite exciting to hear your own name said by someone else, right? So it's like, in the mix with Steve Canuetto and you think, oh, that sounds great. But then if you think about it, you just think, I've just heard this so many times. So just have a think about like what could make it a bit different. Um, think about that when you're briefing them and giving them a script because they're there to provide a service they charge decent money for it and um, you've got an opportunity to get them you know to be more individual and personal to you and 
they will usually supply you different versions. So you'll have the dry voice, you'll have the dry voice over some music, you'll have some sort of whooshy effects with it or not on it, or some reverb on it or not on it. So you'll get loads of different versions that you can use in the DJ as well. So listen, we have overrun. Um, thank you so much to everybody who's been asking questions here. Thanks, Ben, for being here. Sorry, I've kind of been rabbiting Sorry. on and taking over a lot today. It sounds like it's you've okay. got um, some family duties to deal with. Yeah, I'm going to give my three-year-old a, a, a cuddle. She seemed a little bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, all right, great. Good to have you all here. As we've already said, Phil is back next week at this time for the Q&A. Uh, and uh, I'll be uh, live on Sunday at exactly this time um, with uh, a set, live stream DJ set of chunky, bumpy house music. So uh, if you want to kind of check that out, I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks everyone, have a great week, whatever you're doing, and remember to uh, uh, keep in touch with us, ask questions wherever you want, and, uh, and also remember to get out there, get good, and make the moments. Right, Ben? Yep, that's correct. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cheers. See you soon, right, bye. bye.